Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. There will be no second chances for employees of the Bureau of Customs once they are proven involved in corruption under the administration of its new chief, Commissioner Isidro La Peña. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Similar to what I did with PIDEA, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, I will implement a one-strike policy. But once I receive reports of your involvement with corrupt practices and such reports are validated, I will not think twice. This was a stern warning coming from the newly installed Customs Commissioner Isidro La Peña during the formal turnover of the agency's leadership today. In his speech, the new Customs Chief vows to not tolerate and to immediately oust employees of the agency found involved in corrupt practices. La Peña says this is the same policy he enforced during his tenure as the head of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA. He calls on importers and brokers not to connive with any individual or group that collects Tara or Greece money to pursue an illegal shipment. My top priority, and it should be clear to everyone, is to do away with the culture of Pasalubong and Tara. Strictly no gift and no take policy. The new BOC chief says he would also bring with him his own man whom he says would implement reforms to stop corruption. But he assures employees who have been honest in their service in the agency will remain. However, in some positions, I will infuse some new blood to help me introduce transformative measures into an old system that has been destroyed by corrupt organizational culture. Meanwhile, Commissioner La Peña says one of the matters he plans to immediately look into is the reported smuggling of cement. Former Customs Chief Nicanor Feldon plans to give La Peña a set of evidence at the soonest possible time. I will be turning over the evidences to him because uh, officially I can no longer file that. It has to be the Bureau of Customs who's going to file that. La Peña warns those who use his name to collect money from BOC, adding that he will not hesitate to order their arrest. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Senator Panfilo Laxon's allegation of corruption against former Customs Chief Nicanor Faildon has been referred to the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, particularly the issue on Tara system and the alleged welcome gift to Faildon upon his takeover of the agency. According to Laxon, he is considering to file a complaint against Faildon. As of the moment, he is still gathering pertinent evidence against the former Customs Chief. Well, well, we'll come to that. No? I'm uh, consolidating uh, all evidence. No? Uh, even if he does not ask for it, I really intend to pursue this. Meanwhile, Police Chief Superintendent Aaron Aquino will officially begin his duties as the new Director of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA on September 12. Aquino replaces former Director and now Customs Chief Isidro La Peña. The incoming PIDEA chief says the agency's operations might become bloody once drug personalities refuse to cooperate with them. If they don't want to surrender, they refuse to surrender. And they, and they, and they opted to, to fight it out with PIDEA or the PNP, definitely there will be a... Aquino notes, however, that PIDEA cannot fight the country's problem on illegal drugs on its own. That's why it would need the help of the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. In other news, Iloilo City Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog believes that President Duterte is receiving false information. That is why his name is still included in the president's narco list. Mon Hoxon tells us why. In a phone interview with Kuya Daniel Razon in the program Huntahan, Iloilo Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog says his rivals in politics are the ones moving to destroy his name. This is in connection with the issue regarding his name's inclusion in the president's narco list. I respect for the pronouncement of the president. But ako po, I have no idea. Tataka nga ako because as far as I know, parang wala naman God Lord na dito na dapat ipoprotect kasi wala na nga ho. Uh, number two is uh, I probably false information po ang binibigay nakakarating. 
In Mabilog's second term in 2013, he intensified the campaign against illegal drugs. And this is what his enemies are using to destroy him. With the said initiative, Iloilo City received a national award from PIDEA and PNP. This is why Mabilog says it was a surprise that until now, he is still included in the list of narco-politicians. PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa, however, says the President is not receiving a one-sided report. Si, Mayor, si President naman ay nag-iisip. Hindi lang naman uh, one-sided yung kinukonsider ni Presidente. Lahat naman ng pumapasok na information sa kanya, pinaprocess niya yan. Mabilog is trying his best to schedule a meeting with the President to clear his name. But Mabilog believes that the President will be convinced if Police Chief Inspector Espinido will be the one to say that he is not involved in illegal drug trade. He sent to Iloilo, this would again be an opportunity. This is God's way of, uh, of giving us the opportunity for him to assess and investigate Iloilo and finally come out with a report that would be able uh, to uh, reach Malacanang and the President so that at least uh, it would be an opportunity for us to clear Iloilo and my name mm -hmm. uh, that is involved in illegal drug. Mabilog stands firm that he never sell nor use illegal drugs. He also agrees to undergo a drug test if needed. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krami. President Rodrigo Duterte orders the National Bureau of Investigation and the Bureau of Internal Revenue to conduct a lifestyle check on Iloilo City Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog. Rosa Licoz tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte has already received the information that Iloilo City Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog wants to have a discussion with him. Mabilog is one of the personalities in the narco list of the president, who the latter also accuses of being a drug protector. However, the president did not mention whether he has granted or not Mabilog's request. In a speech, the president noted that the mayor is living in a house that looks like a palace. With this, Mr. Duterte said he already ordered the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI and the Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR to conduct a lifestyle check on Mabilog. The President made a statement during the oath-taking ceremony of the newly appointed officials of the Philippine National Police or PNP. Mabilog has sent word that he wants to talk to me. Uh, his house is like a palace in Ayak, ang anak siguro talaga ito ng mayamang mayaman. Yung bahay niya talagang pinaano, pinasilip ko sa mga NBI pati BIR. Meanwhile, the President mentioned that Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak and Indonesian President Joko Widodo want to hold a meeting with him. He says the meeting is about addressing terrorism in the Southeast Asian region. At the same time, the chief executive points out that Marawi crisis is neither the beginning nor the end of the threat. I do not think that the siege in Marami would be the beginning and the end. Uh, it has begun in Sulu many years ago. In the number of times that we were humiliated as a country, and we do do and I, uh, I have yet to hear from Najib. He, he wants asked the three of us to meet somewhere to talk about uh, this uh, new phenomenon of uh, international terrorism. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido will be assigned to Iloilo City in an officer in charge capacity until he gets promoted as senior superintendent. Meanwhile, if it were up to him, PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa wants Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido to stay in Osami City. Mon Hoxon explains why. PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa already signed the order for the transfer of Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido to Iloilo City. But if the PNP Chief will be asked, Espinido should stay in Osamis. If I have my way, uh, I prefer him to stay in Osamis para matapos yung problema doon. Kung, kung, kung mararapatin, mas maganda nga doon muna siya. De La Rosa says the people of Osamis is pleading to him that Espinido should stay. The PNP chief is also worried because the situation in Osamis is not yet stable due to the threat of the Parohinogs. 
De La Rosa believes that Mayor Jed Mabilog is doing all he can do to fight illegal drugs. That is why there is no urgency for Espinido to be sent to Iloilo City. Meanwhile, Based on Republic Act 6975, Espirito cannot be appointed as Iloilo City Police Chief. Only police officials with rank of senior superintendent can be appointed as police chief in highly urbanized city. But according to De La Rosa, the president's directive must prevail. In every rule, there, there is an exemption. Pwede natin uh, exempt for that purpose only the uh, presidential uh, directive. Na. Espinido will be assigned as OIC of Iloilo City Police pending the processing of his promotion. Mon Hokson, UNTV, News and Rescue, Camp Krame. In other news, the Department of Justice or DOJ has formed a panel of prosecutors to handle the case of Kian Loy de los Santos. Meanwhile, Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre insisted the Ombudsman has no jurisdiction on the case. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. The Department of Justice has assigned three prosecutors to conduct the preliminary investigation on the killing of Kian Loy de los Santos. The panel will be led by Senior Assistant State Prosecutor Tofel Austria together with Assistant State Prosecutor Amanda Garcia and Associate Prosecution Attorney Moises Akayan. Last Friday, four Caloocan policemen were charged with murder and torture for the death of the victim. Meanwhile, Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre insists the Ombudsman has no jurisdiction on the case. In response to the calls for the transfer of the charges against the policeman to the Ombudsman. Ang tingin ko lang, ano, presently, na wala pang, walang jurisdiction ng Ombudsman at saka Sandigan Bayan dun sa case na ifinile against uh, Kian, which is murder or torture. Aguirre explains the jurisdiction of the Ombudsman is limited to graft, bribery and cases arising from the violations of government officials. He also says the call for his resignation is baseless since his office is not handling the case. The CHR on its part will continue to monitor the case which will be filed against the policeman. Kung sa ngayon po naman sa sarili naming investigasyon, i, uh, tutulong na lang kami. Pero kung nakita namin medyo yung uh, isasampang kaso ay hindi sa ngayon sa final report ng aming investigador, edi, uh, mag, magdudulog kami ng sariling rekomendasyon. A separate investigation on the case by the NBI is set to be completed this week. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Malacanang accepts the offer of Australia to train the members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP in fighting terrorism. In a statement, Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abelia says it has been the duty of many countries to combat terrorism. Abelia notes the Philippines has in many occasions expressed willingness to accept assistance from other nations in terms of strengthening the AFP's anti-terrorism capabilities. However, the military training is only limited to technical assistance and intelligence information sharing. Meanwhile, the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board is set to release the final list of legitimate transport network vehicle service in September. Meanwhile, the agency clarifies that the apprehension of Glorum TNVS remains suspended. Joe Anano tells us why. After settling the 190 million peso fine to LTFRB, transport network company Uber resumes operation. Uber drivers with and without provisional authority are now allowed to operate. Meanwhile, the agency's apprehension of Colorum Transport Network Vehicle Service or TNVS remains suspended pending LTFRB's decision on the motion for reconsideration filed by Uber and Grab. According to Uber, it has a total of 66,000 drivers and partner operators. But based on LTFRB's records, only 3,500 Uber drivers secured franchise from the agency. In September, the LTFRB will release its final count of TNVS that qualify for franchise and will be allowed to operate. If we look at the impact of getting them off the streets, marami masyadong apektado itong sa, sa one, the families of the TNBS, two, 
yung kanilang mga means of earning a livelihood no uh, we have to take we have to balance everything as we move forward kasi kailangan din namin i-take into consideration yun naman demand ng riding public after which LTFRB will let the transport network company to decide over drivers and operators who will not qualify for franchise it remains uncertain whether Colorum TNVS will still be allowed to apply for franchise after the LTFRB issues the final list in September that's the lookout of the TNCs because we cannot solve everything for them. We can only put policies and guidelines that dapat sundan. Nang ano, we cannot say that we will give you 68,000, 50,000. Meanwhile, Uber vows it will not pass on to consumers the amount of losses it incurred from the fine it settled. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. LTFRB Chairman Martin Delgra, Delgra clarifies his recent statement that commuters must assert their rights when riding a cab. That statement drew flack among lawmakers and netizens. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board Chairman Martin Delgra III classifies the agency is not giving to commuters the burden of addressing the problem on abusive taxi drivers. This has been his response to those who slammed his initial interview on a program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon that drew criticisms among lawmakers and netizens. In the said program, UNTV conducted a social experiment which showed that of the 10 cabs flagged down by Monica Baraglio, none gave her a ride. Huwag niyo na nang tanungin kung saan kayo pupunta. Pagsasakay kayo ng pagba... Pag, uh, Sakay ka na lang. Eh, pagbababain ka, ka chairman eh. Hindi, ganito yan. I have, I have to make a shout out here. Mm -hmm. Anong nangyayari kasi, it, there has been a change of social behavior ng mga tao. Okay. Na para bang kung hanap ka ng taxi, ang ina-anticipate mo tatanggihan na ka. tatanggihan ka. Meaning, mm -hmm. as what the president have been saying, Pag meron mga ganong klaseng situation, assert your right. Pero Chairman, bago kayo magreklamo sa LTFRB, assert your right as passengers. In a statement released by LTFRB, Delgra clarifies that passengers should not let earring taxi drivers to abuse their rights as it violates the law. He says the public should assert their rights as they deserve to receive courteous and proper service. The LTFRB chief also emphasizes that asserting a passenger's right does not mean having a fight with a taxi driver. Telgra advises passengers to record the situation when a cab driver asks for additional fees aside from what is shown on the cab fare meter. Passengers may also report their experience with abusive cab drivers to authorities such as the police, land transportation office, and LTFRB. However, some lawmakers are not convinced of the LTFRB chairman's explanation. While it is true that you have to assert your right in a nice manner, it, it's not an assurance that the driver will accept nicely or kindly to your assertion of your right. Diba? The point here is, hindi mo alam kung ano ang nasa isip ng driver. Aside from magsumbong, kung may makita na ng blatant violations yung LTFRB, they should also act moto proprio. Kasi like yung dun sa, sa video, kita na 10 taxis uh, denied yung, yung, ano yun, yung tao so, dun sa show ni Kuya Daniel. Pero si Chairman Delgra, yung statement niya, parang dinedefend pa rin niya yung taxi. I think it's about time that we find a better and much competent uh, leader than sa LTFRB na yan. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Next on Y News. An impeachment complaint against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno is now filed and endorsed in the House of Representatives. Nearby residents complain that a government housing project in a remote area in Calamba, Laguna is no longer conducive for occupancy. And live performances of OPM artists and the revelation of Wish for 2008 Wishers in tomorrow's Wish 1075's third anniversary. White News will be right back.
Department of Agrarian Reform Secretary Rafael Mariano today faced the Commission on Appointments for his confirmation hearing. But one oppositor blocked the hearing even before it started. Nel Maribok will tell us why. Around 19 groups have endorsed the confirmation of the appointment of Department of Agrarian Reform Secretary Rafael Mariano. However, there are also about 10 opposing his nomination. One of them is the Gallego family who is claiming that around 250 armed farmers forced their way into their ranch in October 2016 to seize their land. Teresa Gallego says Secretary Mariano have a direct contact with the group and was supporting them. Among the farmers who forced their way into the ranch were the members of Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas whom the secretary previously led. They destroyed the cattle electric fence, cut and burned the cattle grass food, and said that they are taking over our land and planting and building their homes there. This Mariano belies. The incident mentioned was neither ordered nor instigated by the Department of Agrarian Reform. The Secretary says he has ordered for an investigation of the said incident. Also highlighted in the hearing was Mariano's former affiliation with the leftist group and it was the National Democratic Front of the Philippines who recommended him to President Duterte. Meanwhile, Mariano expresses his support to the resumption of the peace talks with the rebel group. Ako po ay hanggang ngayon, hindi po ako pinapanawan ng pag-asa na marisyong ang usapang pangkapayapaan. Mariano's confirmation hearing as DAR chief is set to September 5. He was also advised by the CA chair as to how to address the issues and the questions of the members of the Baikam body. Mas maganda at mas gugustuhin ng mga miyembro ng komisyon kung direkta mga sagot. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. An impeachment complaint against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno is now filed and endorsed in the House of Representatives. Victor Cosare will tell us why. 25 members of the House of Representatives endorsed the impeachment complaint against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno that was filed by Attorney Larry Gadon. The 25 congressmen did not personally join the filing of the complaint, but they did sign the document. Attorney Gadon says they expect other lawmakers to sign tomorrow as around 42 congressmen have signified to sign the impeachment complaint. Gadon says the basis of his complaint against Chief Justice Sereno were culpable violation of the Constitution, betrayal of public trust, and corruption for not rightfully declaring her assets in her Sal N, questionable travel allowances incurred by Sereno and her staff for disclosing Supreme Court resolutions without going through the on bank, and for her alleged ownership of a vehicle which is valued at 5.1 million pesos. The lawyer is confident that his evidence against the Chief Justice is substantial and he was able to obtain original copies of the documents from the Supreme Court. UNTV News has been making attempts to once again get the side of Chief Justice Sereno regarding the said impeachment complaint, but so far the Lady Chief Magistrate is yet to commit for an interview. Nevertheless, Sereno has earlier said that she is not afraid of these moves and stands firm that she is not guilty of corruption. Meanwhile, House Speaker Pantalion Alvarez says once the complaint is submitted to them, they will immediately hear it in the committee level. He adds that once they are able to determine that the said impeachment complaint has form and substance, he guarantees that it will reach the impeachment court. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Many senators want to carefully study first the plan of the Marcos family to return to the government its ill-gotten wealth. They say the plan should be clarified first, particularly if there is a condition on the said offer of the Marcoses. Nel Maribuhok explains why. The government should look for ways on how to return the ill-gotten wealth of Marcos family. Some senators say the move should be thoroughly clarified and that authorities should determine if there are some agreements on the matter that they should discuss. Tatama lang naman, dapat lang naman na ibalik nila yung perang na nakaw sa bayan. No? So itong pag-uusap ni President Duterte at ng mga Marcos, sana po ibalik talaga lahat ng perang na nakaw nila. Uh, magkano po ito? Ito yung magandang alamin natin sa PCGGs. Pagka Marcos Welt ang pag-usapan, i-decide pa, ilgatin ba yan? But if there's such an offer, that's good. Kung connected nga with the case, then uh, we better clarify everything before accepting. Pero yung 
unconditional donations to the government and unconditional help are welcome. The Department of Justice also believes that the said offer should be studied thoroughly. Ano bang kakailanganin? Do we need uh, an enabling law? Or uh, just uh, could, we, could we do it just uh, on the power, the present power of the president? Malacanang, meanwhile, has defended the president's statement regarding the matter. This after the group campaign against the return of the Marcoses to Malacanang said President Rodrigo Duterte seemingly became a spokesman and negotiator for the Marcoses. Presidential spokesperson Ernesto Abella says that this closed the said plan in the spirit of transparency. Abella notes that the president has in mind the best interest of the Filipinos and that he wants the public to benefit from the recovery of the Marcoses ill-gotten wealth. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. UNTV's Bawal Ang Picon team opens the opportunity for authorities to explain the reasons behind the abandoned government housing units in a remote town in Calamba, Laguna. Jun Soreau tells us why. This is what the UNTV Bawal Ang Picon team found when they arrived at the Lake Breeze residences in Barangay Look, Calamba, Laguna a housing site that now looks like a ghost town. In a complaint received by the group, the site of the public housing units for government troopers no longer looks like a community as many of the houses remained unoccupied. Based on the figures of the National Housing Authority or NHA, of the more than 2,000 units built in the Lake Breeze residences, only 421 are occupied. The NHA says they experience problems when the awardees of the houses backed out. Ang isa sa mga naging downside po, yung pong nag-express ng interest at pumirma sa master list, may mga pagkakataon po na bigla na lang po silang nag-withdraw. The agency explains that before implementing a housing project, there should have been a complete list of those interested to avail to be awarded by the AFP and PNP Housing Board. With this, a contract will be signed with a developer. It will serve as proof that the site has been chosen for a housing unit based on the submitted list. Only then can the NHA enter for the financing of the project. After the AFP and PNP Housing Board submit the approved master list of beneficiaries, the NHA will begin the construction of the housing units. NHA's loan documentation only happens before or when the beneficiary already occupies the government housing unit. With this, the NHA argues that once the AFP and PNP submit the list of beneficiaries, they assume that it has already been thoroughly assessed. Ang AFP PNP Housing Board po ang namahala ng application form through the employee's housing. Meron naman pong ganong proseso, pero the accountability was left to the AFP PNP Housing Board. However, the PNP says it could not force the awardees to occupy the housing units as they have valid reasons to reject the offer. Hindi pa naman kasi nila nakikita yung itsura ng unit in actual. So nung nakita na na ganun na hindi naman maayos ang pagkakagawa, yung iba naman is nalipat na, eh that's the time na. Actually pinapayagan naman natin mag-back out nun dahil nga may kanya-kanya silang rason eh. Nung nagkanda kami ng inspection, marami pong kakulangan po sa mga housing site, project site. Hindi pa nakagabit po kasi yung mga electrical and uh, water installations. Mm -hmm. So, paano nila tatanggapin at matitirhan yan kung kulang ng pasilidad? The Lake Breeze Residences is just one of the housing projects of the government of which many of its beneficiaries do not want to occupy because of various problems. How much did the government spend for the construction of these housing units? Watch more details about this issue tomorrow on Y News. Jun Suryao, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, a group of health workers condemned the proposed budget for 2018 of the Department of Health, noting that the amount is against the poor. Ray Pelayo tells us why. A group of health workers argue that the services the poor receive will lessen once the proposed budget of the Department of Health or DOH for 2018 gets approval. According to the Alliance of Health Workers, 1.5 billion pesos has been cut from the proposed budget of DOH which was supposed to be allocated to the Maintenance and Other Operating Expenses or MOOE for 2018. 
The MOOE serves as the fund for public hospitals' primary needs like medicine, IV fluids, and others. With the reduction of DOH's budget, patients will be left with no choice but to pay for other medical expenses. Sa tulong ng namin mga health workers sa different hospitals sa Labing, uh, na napanalunan namin ito dahil naibalik ito sa General Appropriation Act. Ito na naman for 2018, inuulit na naman ni Ubiyan. The group says seven public hospitals will be affected by the reduction of DOH's budget, which includes the Amay Pakpak Medical Center in Marawi City. The health workers argue DOH increased the budget for the Philippine Health Insurance or PhilHealth to 3.906 billion pesos, which they claim does not benefit the many. Sasabihin nila, mag-recruit kayo ng mas maraming PhilHealth members, mas marami tayong pasyente, mas maraming reimbursement, Hati, hati tayo. The group also complains that many health workers are overworked and underpaid while more than 20,000 of them are contractual workers. It argues that lack of hospital personnel means lower quality of service. Ang dami magagaling nurses sa amin dati, pero ngayon mga nag a na. Health Secretary Pauline Obial, meanwhile, explains the Department of Budget and Management cuts the DOH's budget because of their unused funds in 2016. Ubial says they have already appealed the said move to Congress. She also notes the increase in the budget of PhilHealth arises from the fact that the benefits for senior citizens also saw an increase. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. In other news, House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez says the proposed postponement of the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections to 2018 no longer needs to be certified as urgent. Alvarez says this is because Congress can certainly approve it at the soonest possible time. The House Speaker notes that it was already President Rodrigo Duterte himself who requested the postponement so as to avoid the use of drug money for the elections. Well, yung barangay elections, basta kami dito sa house ay uh, napagkasunduan na namin na ito ay pagpaliban by May next year. No? At uh, merong holdover yung mga barangay officials. Ayun, hindi ko pa alam sa Senado kung ano yung version nila. Pero uh, uh, isa ito sa mga pinakiusap din na ating Pangulo na ipagpaliban muna dahil nga hindi pa masyadong nalinis yung mga iba't ibang barangay kung saan yung kanya, kanilang mga barangay uh, officials ay involved sa illegal drugs. And the Senate is set to tackle some of the priority legislations of the Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council under the Duterte administration targets to have the 27 priority bills passed in the Congress. Among these are about the national ID system, the ending of contractualization, use of COCO levy funds, law that will resolve traffic problems, the tax reform package, creation of Department of House and Urban Development under the right sizing bill, also included in the discussion are federalism, reforms in the government health care programs, and other amendments on important laws. Yesterday, President Rodrigo Duterte once again mentioned about the amendment of the procurement process law. It's high time. I hope Congress uh, is listening. Alam mo yung lowest bid is the culprit of the mall. Yung lowest bid na yan is the source of all corruption and the efficiency and the inadequacy of government to meet its public works commitment. Senate Majority Leader Senator Tito Soto says these are among that what should be given consideration in the ongoing sessions in the Congress. 27, yun yung led up priority list. That does not uh, remove the Senate priority list and the House priority list. Meron din kami kanya-kanya kasi may mga pet bills eh. Pa mga senador at mga congressman. The second LEDAC meeting is set on September 20, the third time that the Council will convene this year. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. A parent of one of the victims laments that the lack of security in Central Park Tower condominium contributes to high numbers of deaths and injuries in the last night's stabbing incident. Rogel Adora tells us why. 
Messages of sympathies and condolences to the family of journalist and former SSS media officer Joel Palacios come pouring in on his Facebook page. Palacios is one of the five who died when a man went on a murder frenzy in Central Park Tower condominium last night. Friends and colleagues in the industry were still in shock of what happened to Palacios. Trahedya yan at uh, kahit kanino pwede mangyari yan. Um, pag tinatanong nga ako ng mga ibang kaibigan, siguro masasabi ko lang yan, it was at the wrong time, at the wrong, at the wrong place. At uh, dumating talaga yung panahon, yung panahon niya. Eh, alam mo, sa taas na yan eh. Also killed in the amok was Desiree, the 12-year-old daughter of Mary Grace Peru. Mary Grace laments that the incident could have been avoided should the condominium is implementing a strict and tight security. Kinecheck po ba nila yung mga pumapasok? Hindi po. Uh, tinatas lang nila yung ano, yung pinakadaan, yun lang. Nakaupo-upo lang dun. May monitor naman. Bakit hindi nila nalaman na? Hindi nila alam na sa 16th floor, may nagkakagulo na. Meanwhile, NCRPO Chief Oscar Albayalde says the suspect Robert Garan had a fight with his girlfriend which led him to run amok until the SWAT team was able to neutralize him. Garan stabbed his girlfriend first and then threw her from the 16th floor of the building. Unang-una, nakita na doon sa CCTV area, walang nagbabantay sa kanila. No, walang nagbabantay sa kanila, inamin nila yon na walang nagbabantay sa ano sa CCTV. So hindi nila alam, nalaman lang nila nung may commotion, nung nagiiingay na doon sa labas. At nung nagiiingay sa labas, uh, doon lang pa lang sila pumunta o tumawag sa PCT, which is a few uh, steps from ano, uh, no, no? Uh, napakalapit ng PCT. Meanwhile, for psychologist Dr. Camille Garcia, Too much stress, bad childhood experience, or being under the influence of drugs could drive a person to commit crime. Once na nagkaroon na isang stressful event, the only way na parang sabihin nila na mailabas yung aggression nila, yung, yung galit nila, kung ano man yung conflicts na naranasan nila ng bata nila, is yung, yung impulse na meron silang... Uh, pamamaraan to release. And one way is yung tinatawag natin na um, impulsive murdering. Talagang prepeding mangyari na because of yung use of drug use, uncontrollable to mga impulses na to. Rogel Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A Taekwondo Jin in Sambuanga City ends his blossoming career by committing suicide. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. 14-year-old Melbourne Korahe, a grade 10 student of the Zamboanga City High School, Maine, was found dead in his house earlier this morning. Melbourne had brought home medals from various local competitions. According to his father, the teenager asked for 2,700 pesos last night as payment for his training on September 3. But his parents have no money to give. Dapat yan, gobyerno na agad maghingi, na, hindi na kanina yung mga atleta PD, na nasa kanya yung maghingi ba? Dapat sa gabi ba na, o si, sino maghawak yan? O. Mr. Coraje said they noticed something unusual when Melbourne did not go out of his room the morning after he asked for money. Afterwards, his sibling went to his room and found him hanging with a belt tied on his neck. The parents of the teenager said they extremely regret what happened to their son whose dream was to join national and international taekwondo competitions. Okay, siya ang pinakataas dito daw sa city ay mag tapos yan siya ang siya na mag, mag magturo ano ba magtaas ng belt niya. The victim was among the best taekwondo athletes in his school. Leslie Longbowen, UNTV News and Rescue Philippines. Wish 107.5's third anniversary celebration tomorrow guarantees a lot of fun for wishers. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. Wish 107.5 has been providing good music and granting wishes for three years now. In its first few years in the industry, Wish 107.5 has already been known in the local and international community for introducing unique concepts that the public enjoy. Among these are the first and only FM mobile booth in the Philippines, the Wish Bus. 
and the station's high-quality Wish-exclusive videos that music lovers always watch out for. No wonder that Wish has become the number one FM YouTube channel in the Philippines with 1.4 million subscribers and nearly 500 million views. And as a treat to all supporters, Wish invites everyone to join its tremendous thanks party tomorrow. Doon makikita ng mga wishers natin lahat ng favorite uh, artist nila, mga paborito nilang panoorin doon sa exclusives natin sa YouTube. Ano? At uh, they're going to win a lot of uh, prizes. For our anniversary, there will be granting of wishes as well. The Wishful 20 of the newest online singing competition, Wishcovery, will also be revealed on Wish 107.5's anniversary celebration. Wish will also feature live performances of famous OPM artists including KZ Tandingan, Michael Pangilinan, TJ Monterde, Jake Zyrus, Bugoy Drilon, Barbie Almalbes, and many more. The Three Mendes Thanks Party will be held at Eastwood Central Plaza from 9 in the morning to 9 in the evening. Meanwhile, because of the three amazing years, Wish 1075 plans to bring their music to a wider scope. We're going to have the Wish Bus International. Maglalagay din tayo ng Wish Bus sa New York and sa Hollywood. And uh, of course, uh, we're going to bring our local talents international then. We're going to bring them in the global stage. Leslie Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Coming up on Y News. Volunteers pitch in with Hurricane Harvey rescue efforts. Some evacuees take shelter in MCGI's facility in Houston. Buno Town in Spain braces for the most famous food fight in the world, La Tomatina. And preparations to begin for a tribute concert for soldiers and police fighting in Marawi City. The songs of four heroes at three. More from Y News after this break. The final medal tally in the recently concluded 29th Southeast Asian Games in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia is now released. Post country Malaysia is the overall champion with 145 gold medals. Malaysia is followed by Thailand with 72 golds and Vietnam with 58. Singapore drops from second place to fourth after getting 57 gold medals, while Indonesia remains in the fifth place with 38 gold medals. The Philippines also maintained being in the sixth spot with 24 golds, a, fifth, a five gold medal short from the 2015 SEA Games tally. Meanwhile, the Philippines will no longer perform in tonight's SEA Games closing ceremonies. Chef de Michon, Cynthia Corion, says they had to cancel after learning the last-minute changes in the agreed-upon length of time of the performance. They were told that the performance time was cut to 10 minutes only from the original 20 minutes. Carion says she has asked for understanding from all Filipinos for this unexpected turn of events. UNTV together with the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police begin preparations for the benefit concert, Songs for Heroes 3. Robby de Guzman tells us why. The AFP and the PNP want to pay tribute to the sacrifices and gallantry of government troops killed at the front lines of the battle in Marawi City. The organizing committee, led by UNTV, has met with representatives from AFP and PNP to finalize the date and venue of the concert. Deputy Chief of Staff for Civil Military Operations, Major General Belcades Feliciano says they will hold auditions to search for policemen and soldiers who will perform in the concert. Feliciano notes they will have no difficulty in selecting performers as they have good singers in every unit of the AFP. He says they will just look for voices appropriate for each song included in the lineup. As far as AFP is concerned, maraming talents. No? It's um, uh, karamihan nga mga units or in the, on, within the major service level. Meron mga bands yan. May mga singers uh, na ginagamit uh, during may mga activities. No? 
uh, kagaya ng Army, may combo yung Army. Ang Army, meron din yung mga talented na singing soldiers. Uh, ganon din yung Navy, may yung combo yung Marines, yung Navy, meron din. At saka yung, uh, yung Philippine Air Force. The General has expressed gratitude to UNTV for helping wounded soldiers and the families of those killed in the clashes against terrorists in Marawi City. Malaki yung pasasalamat namin sa UNTV dahil uh, for the continuous uh, partnership with the, the AFP. Uh, maraming contributions na tulong na ibibigay yung UNTV. Unang-una, uh, pinopromote the AFP and the PNP especially now yung heroism nung ano mga sundalo natin yung nagbuhis ng buhay doon uh, kinocover in a highlight plus uh, other activities kagaya ng ano ano UNTV Cup This is the third concert organized by UNTV which is dedicated to soldiers and policemen Songs for Heroes 1 held on March 19 2015 was dedicated for the members of the Special Action Force or SAF who died in an operation to capture international terrorist Zulkifli Binhir alias Marwan Songs for Heroes 2 held on June 30 2015 was dedicated for the legacies left by former PNP OIC PDDG Leonardo Espina in the P PNP and former AFP Chief of Staff General Gregorio Katapang Jr. in the AFP. Aside from singing soldiers and policemen, also performing in the Songs for Heroes 3 are famous singers. The concert will be held at the Araneta Coliseum on October 17. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Those are the reasons behind the news, August 30, 2017. I am Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know... We will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news?